and welcome to Stocks and Under. Today we're talking to uh, Ting Yen and Peter Himes from 4DS Memory. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. If we can jump in, um, just for people that don't know the company that mm -hmm. well, tell us a little bit about your yourself, your background, and what 4DS Memory is all about. Okay. So, I'm currently the CTO of the company, and uh, what uh, I've been around the Silicon Valley forever. That's basically my life uh, for the last, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass how old I am, many, many years. <laughs> and all in memory. That's my life. It's always in memory, all sorts of memory. So this is the latest uh, disruptive memory that I'm working on. And 4DS, what we do is we do uh, one of this classified as emerging memory, because all the traditional memories of the DRAM flash, SRAM, they all kind of have their own limits and they're all kind of running into um, what's called, uh, you know, difficult to extend their scaling factor or the cost reduction. So we are in the classified as the RAM, which is a new a type of memory that has a, a lot more different uh, capabilities to offer that the traditional RAMs cannot. All right. And Peter, you're a strategic advisor to the board. That's right. Yeah, so I was brought on um, um, at the end of last year in order to help out. Uh, I've known Ting for many years. I've also been in Silicon Valley since the 80s. So um, a lot of it has been in semiconductors, but uh, most of my last 20, 25 years has been really in new market development, um, uh, new market, uh, you know, bringing technologies out to markets and finding customers and engaging with the customers. Right. So, um, so I'm really bringing it in from the business side in order to under, you know, help to understand you know, what are the unique value propositions that 4DS has, where does it fit, and then to have those conversations with the customers, with right. our potential customers, I guess you can say. All right. Uh, and Ting, you're CTO, so yes. it's always hard to speak in, in layman's terms, I guess, when it comes to technology, but maybe mm -hmm. for our viewers, in very simple terms, you mentioned a little bit about reramp already and where mm -hmm. it sits and what it does differently. Correct. Correct. Maybe we can zoom in just a little bit without getting okay. too too technical, okay. but for our viewers to get an understanding of where exactly the reram fits okay. in and how that's different from just a couple of years. Ago. Okay, so um, reram that we are uh, developing is what we want to be is to complement uh, the current uh, DRAM space. So what happens in today's world is that everything is getting faster, quicker, and the processing, especially with the uh, the new uh, gen AI, generative AI, where contents are being generated based on a lot of the learning and uh, inference AI that comes in. And everything has to happen in real time. And when things happen in real time, you're running out of bandwidth. Bandwidth means how much data can go into the main brain processor. And, and it's all limited. In, and DRAM can only do so much. What DRAM doesn't do is it does not remember what was processed. So if it doesn't get into the main processing decision making, it needs to be thrown away and redone. What we do is we create a memory where we're at the speed of DRAM, and yet we have persistency. That means we can retain the 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 uh, created uh, results of the of the uh, learning and then feed it into the processor in due time, without disrupting the whole data flow. The the key is. We keep the data flow so that the AI, the general AI can act in real time to the user. The user are the chat GPT guys sitting on the computer wanting to know I, A, B, C, and they want the answer right away. Right. Yeah, as always, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's only going to get worse because everything is now into it. Uh, that type of uh, query is becoming into everything we do. It's going to go into the mainstream of our lives. Right. And so this morning, yeah. um, so it's Monday, the 4th of March today, mm -hmm. you yeah. uh, or 4DS released a, an announcement, a presentation. Presentation. Very much uh, AI mm -hmm. focused, AI centered. Correct. So if you look at 23, you overcame some technical hurdle, hurdles. Correct. If we look now, if we look forward, can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about where we are in the development roadmap, specifically when it comes to uh, AI? So what needs mm -hmm. to happen in the next little while? Yeah. So um, what we're doing is that we are taking our technology to the next uh, node, which is right now what happens is that because of the need for this type of memories, we want to take it to uh, a, a space where the scale it to a space where the density can be 
what's needed for this type of uh, uh, AI processors uh, memory needs. And talking specifically, we're taking to the 20 nanometer node. For our RAM, 20 nanometers is really the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the most advanced uh, node that people have taken to. So far, even the biggest foundry in the world, as everybody knows, they are only sitting at 40. They haven't announced that 20 is coming, but not that mainstream yet. So we're going to take ours right to that node. Right. Okay. And that's a very big step for us. I was going to say a big ambition. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Peter, as your uh, role as strategic advisor mm -hmm. to the company, um, tell us a little bit about the focus area for you uh, at 40S. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it's most likely some AI related, I'm guessing. But maybe yeah, from yeah. a high level, what are you focusing on with 40S in, in the <laughs> Yeah, so the real um, uh, challenge that I've had uh, and where I focus my energy is really in understanding, you know, where does 40S memory fit within this whole memory landscape, if you will, right? So we have many different types of memories that are out there, um, including, you know, the typical flash and DRAM and SRAM, but all, there's other emerging memories that are you know, MRAM and FRAM and PCRAM and, and different kinds of things, even other types of VRAM that are out there. Um, and so really we needed to understand, you know, what is the value proposition that 40s is coming into? How do we, you know, how does that being um, influenced by what's going on with the AI industry? Um, and where do we think that we should take uh, take us to in, in, in terms of the market? So that's what we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, what I would say, and that's just really the purpose of the presentation that was sent out. So right. the presentation um, is based on the news release that we just did, based on the latest technical results uh, from our testing. Um, but really, it's also about um, this, you know, what do you say? Dis you know, d describing to the market. Um, where we want to position 4DS going forward and why we think that this is the right memory at the right time for these emerging um, AI applications. And this is because of this intersection of you know, incredibly high data requirements, incredibly high bandwidth needs, uh, but as well as the inherent bottlenecks in the processors um, based on this you know, memory to compute uh, interface, um, the amount of the, the number of these, uh, what do you say, um, inference nodes in these inference models that have mm -hmm. to be you know, continually calculated and processed on, you know, on an ongoing basis, and how the vector for all these things are just going astronomical. Right. So this is where um, the industry is basically saying that there's a critical need for a new type of memory uh, right. in order to help to overcome th some of these bottlenecks and barriers. And this is where we believe that 4DS has the opportunity to to, to play in. Right. Yeah. So can we, if we drill a little bit deeper on that, right? Because yeah. everyone uses AI these days, even yeah. you know, Quantum Telstra might mention AI and yeah. probably the furthest away from AI uh, in terms of, you know, <laughs> being an AI company, but yet sure. media yeah, labels right. them. Uh, anyway, yeah. you know, you, you've seen probably the media uh, in, in, in general terms is all over AI, right? So yeah. if we just drill it, uh, bring it down to what it really is um, and specifically yeah. 4DS is memory because like you said, there's many types of Memory emerging RAM, uh, emerging uh, yeah. VRAM even yeah, yeah, sure. um, can be used in embedded, standalone, neuromorphic, all sorts right. of applications, mm -hmm. but also application areas, right? So edge That's AI right. is different from AI in right. the server or in the, in, the, in the data center, right? So for sure, yeah. Maybe if you can talk a little bit about where specifically your memory would sit, um, the 40s's memory in, in the AI, AI landscape, because I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's probably some sort of you know sweet spot. Uh, spots for you guys? <laughs> um, I guess the best way of, of thinking about it is that, you know, there is a lot of interest in explosion AI right now. And a lot of people, I think rightly are saying this is kind of like day one for the new AI age, you know, moving forward. So there's a huge amount of stuff that's going to be happening down the road. But I think it's also important to put it in the context that, you know, AI is part of this machine learning development, which has been going on in the industry for the last 30 or 40 years. Um, and that's everything from your thermostat to your, um, your uh, analog brake system to your Alexa at home and all, all these things of different levels of um, learning that are built into the machines. Um, so, you know, with that, you know, wh where we believe that uh, we have a fit is in these larger language models that require high scale and high density, mm -hmm. um, where uh, it's not just the actual performance that's going to become a bottleneck, but it's actually also the energy that's going to become a bottleneck as well. So, um, yeah, and then there's other architectures that are evolving that are looking at different different ways of architecting these AI processors that could be more efficient. 
um, that rely on more of the analog processing uh, or the analog nature, I guess you can say, of how these models are working. Right. Uh, and uh, so there's people that are trying to take advantage of that directly. So that's another possible area for us to uh, to, uh, to us to participate in. Right. Uh, this is all you know exploratory at this time. So you know we are uh, saying that this is our intent. This is where the market is going. And for sure, I mean, we're open to having all these discussions. Yeah, yeah. because that's the, uh, the pitfall, all right, or the bottom, uh, the, the, the tricky part of it is there's so many application areas, uh, but you're a small company, so you need mm -hmm. to focus somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess the question is, so where, where is that going to be? But that's it's going to be with it. partners. Yeah, yeah it's not sure. going to be from us coming out with a, a yeah. memory uh, product or technology ourselves and and uh, selling it into the server workstations. And you know, we're yeah. too small to be able to do that because mm -hmm. you really need to have be something of the scale of a Micron or an Infineon mm -hmm. to be able to do that right. kind of a thing mm -hmm. directly. But we right. have the technology based on many, many years of, of uh, development. Um, and that is where uh, we differentiate ourselves. Yeah. So you know, our goal is to find partners um, that are also can see the benefit in terms of you know, adding this technology into their solution, right? And then working together in terms of you know bringing this out to market. Right, that's our goal. Well, for this. Yeah, plus Rebrand is highly tunable as well, so you could tweak it to different. Oh, applications. that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So it's one of the big advantages yeah. that we have. So it's very yeah. flexible. It's very fast. Yeah. Um, but it has, and, and but it can also have very high endurance. So yeah. based on the different applications specifically, you know, we can actually tune our cell um, to what the actual requirements need. Yeah. So right. that's something that the other guys, the other. Yeah. The other technologies cannot do. They're mostly limited by their right, um, their right, uh, uh, um, you know, technology or the, the, the physics behind the writing of it. Yeah. Uh, which means that they need to either go slow or go repetitive or go carefully in order to build up this charge. Right. So this is where we think that you know speed uh, is an advantage for sure. Okay. Yeah, we we definitely have uh, things that other RMs or other emerging memories, especially in the RM space, cannot do. So yeah. we're, we're very unique in the point that we're, we're at very fast speed, and yet you know we have completely tunable to the application needs. This is also yeah. goes to the yeah. repositioning or the yeah. new positioning for 4DS yeah. into this marketplace. Mm -hmm. If you look back at uh, what we've been promoting or mm -hmm. just talking about, I guess right. I'd say, in the years past, it's been more about this storage class memory. Right. Um, that is really a crowded space. Yeah. Um, and that is actually now behind this new standard called CXL, mm -hmm. which is a communication standard for all of this distributed memory. Um, but you know that doesn't really take advantage. In fact, if you be behind that that uh, that uh, protocol, then you basically lose all the advantages of the speed that we have as a memory. Right. So we we don't think that we want to play in that space. We think that there's a there's a big hole in the memory space for this very fast persistent memory. That can be close to the processing core. That can help with uh, some of these fundamental challenges. Right. So, looking at team, looking mm -hmm. at the the, the the steps that need to be taken. You yes. mentioned it a little bit earlier already, but yeah. it's an ambitious goal, right? So, what yeah. needs to happen purely from a development point of view? I'm not saying mm -hmm. research point of view, but development mm -hmm. point of view in the next while to actually get to that stage where yeah. you, know, you can actually engage on a very high level with these potential problems. Yeah. So, so the fundamental technology has been. Pretty much, we have we have shown that is 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 it has all the characteristics that the industry will want, the 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 uh, system we want, and us taking it to the next uh, scaled node, it just requires a lot of hard work and and being extremely uh, prudent about you know uh, doing all everything right. There is really not too many things we need to do other than just show the world that we can do it. Right. I think one of the other advantages yeah. um, from what you've right. been working on is mm -hmm. the fact that it is, and we've already shown that it's fab transferable, yeah. um, and it's Absolutely. a back-end process that has yeah. no inherent problems with being used in any of the advanced fabs. Right. Um, this is where Ting's experience really yeah. comes from, because his yeah. background is in doing, doing this many, many times over. So yeah. that will give our new potential partners a lot of yeah. confidence that you know, they can take this and use this in um, their designs, and then we can work with the foundries uh, if it's a foundry or an IDM um, in in terms of setting this process up within that right. technology. Okay, and and previously, mm -hmm. Fortius has communicated that it saw itself as a uh, takeover target in the sense that once its technology has been developed to a certain point, the most likely scenario would be an acquisition by by an industry player. So, 
Um, what do you think, Peter, uh, these potential acquirers would need to see at 4DS before they're ready to pull the trigger on something like that? Um, we think that, uh, well, first off, nobody knows, right, in terms of what the, you know, what the, the actual, how things are actually going to play out. But we think that uh, we need to be, get to the point where we can work with a potential partner on a proof of concept on you know, putting something together uh, in order to show that the technology within this kind of application can work. Um, and that will have to be done with the partnership. And you know, that can, will either catalyze an acquisition, presumably, by either that partner, by a foundry, or by a third party, or, or, or by somebody that actually sees what the value is. So we'll see how that plays out. Right. And so, final question, in terms of mm -hmm. sort of ticking the boxes in that sense, so how yeah. far away do you think you are uh, before those boxes have been ticked? Well, we're, you know, our goal for, you know, right now we're focused on our goals for 2024, mm -hmm. um, which is from the technical mm -hmm. side, um, getting the next 20 nanometer uh, node out uh, and getting that tested and showing that we can scale to that level. Right. And then on the business or partnership side, excuse me, is to have these conversations with these players in this space uh, in order to find out, you know, who has the most, um, you know, where do, who, where does it resonate with the most, let me right. say, right? And then to work with them on crafting, you know, kind of what that next step will be. Yeah. So it's not going to be all finished this year. I don't think so at all. But uh, this is the year to set things up, to really tee things up for the future. Right. Okay. Maybe one last question. Yes. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of sort of technical milestones, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. For, you mentioned 2024. Yeah. What do investors have to look forward to in terms of, you updating them on some of these steps that are very, you know, very uh, sort of structural, right? You need to do mm -hmm. sort of, yeah. uh, testing, qualification, all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. cool. yeah. uh, on which you need to update the market. So what, what can we look forward to this year specifically? I think I think what happens this year is that we, we're definitely going to be able to show that uh, we have a technology that uh, is very, uh, what do you call, very much uh, repeatable and scalable and and I'm trying. Oh well, we have already shown that it's totally transferable from five to five mm -hmm. you know, because we have done that in the past. But getting to the next uh, node will hopefully show that this technology is such a differentiating technology that we offer actually a solution to a problem mm -hmm. that the AI guys cannot solve with today's existing uh, memories out there. So the key is that we're offering something that that solves a problem that's imminent in the AI world. When I say imminent, it's because they already realize, and we already talked to some big uh, AI system houses, that, that everything's exponential. In about two, three years, I mean, they're facing an imminent problem that uh, things are just not going to work correctly. It, things are going to be unreliable and so on, unless they solve this whole data flow. Yeah. Of uh, yeah, and they need a new kind of new classification of memory to do that. Right. Yeah. Not just data flow, but I, I assume, like you mentioned earlier, really, energy consumption as well. Oh, energy absolutely. That, absolutely. Yeah, that's all over the world. The whole thing. Yeah. Like, that's, you're scaling up to yeah. tens or hundreds of thousands of processors. Yeah. Right. So right. Those are that, that's, different that's, kinds of challenges. For that's that. absolutely the, the cost and the energy. You know, people are always saying that the whole world, all the energy will be consumed by these yeah. machines, <laughs> which is yeah. unrealistic. All this. All right. Good stuff. Peter Ting, thank you very much. Yes, of course. Nice to meet you. Absolutely.